This is an overview of the engagement training series. All modules are designed specifically for families and professionals. The workshops in this 14 module series focus on the importance of the family's engagement in their child's education and how family engagement contributes to their children's success in school. This particular session will focus on providing you as a future trainer of these modules the necessary information you need to be successful, not only with the use of the materials, but also your implementation in Kentucky communities, at conferences, and so forth. You should have downloaded and printed the following items at registration for this session. The Family Professional User Guide, the Professional User Guide Resource Materials Handout, the Outline or Agenda for Module 1, and then optional was the Ideas for Alternative Methods of Delivery. So, do you have the handouts downloaded and printed? Remember, when you complete the evaluation at the end of the webinar, you will receive the link to download any or all of the engagement series modules.
We will explore the engagement training series for the purpose of equipping you to become a trainer of any module within the series. We will not be going into each module content as part of this overview. The goal is for you to use the engagement training series to deliver high quality training to families and professionals. The content experts designed each module for the early childhood professionals and families. Some modules are meant to be presented by a family professional team and others may be presented by individuals. Examples being a family network trainer, the regional training center staff person, a child care resource and referral trainer, a parent in your community and so forth. For those modules recommending the use of a family member and a professional, the professional can be the expert in the content and the family member the expert in the practical application of the content to families and children. The content level of these modules range from level 1 to level 3. Because the content is appropriate for both professionals and families, these modules could be used at a parent-teacher event like a PTA meeting or a parent-teacher night. Most of the modules are designed to allow you to provide a mini session or a longer session with more in-depth information which builds on the mini session. Example of a mini session might be a family lunch day with their child where uh, a family comes in, takes about 20 minutes to eat lunch with their child. Then the parents spend 30 minutes with you as a trainer on a topical mini session using the first 30 minute version. Additional handouts, activities, and so forth are included to extend the impact of the information for broader or longer sessions. You could even make that mini session um, available to them and extend the content with another mini session the following week and then you could give them more information from the same topic, have it like a two-week program instead of a one. You could take the time you need to meet the goals and objectives of the training. The wonderful thing about the Kentucky Engagement Training Series is that they are ready to use and they're user friendly. All we ask is that you as a trainer become the expert in the content and the presentation, the presentation style that suits you. Then assure the validity of the content is adhered to in order to meet the outcomes expressed in the evaluations and within the module. How that happens could vary based on the audience. The trainer determines how to make the information work for their participant.
turn to page four of your Family Professional User Guide. What do you notice about the topics that you see there? Determination of these topics came from two focus groups with trainers of families, one in the urban community and one in a rural region of Kentucky. This, these focus groups approved a survey which was sent to as many providers of family trainings as could be identified. And then using the feedback, this engagement series was born. Who developed the series or the modules within the series? One of the gaps, once the gaps were identified in training options available to trainers of families who had children prenatal to eight, the topics quickly emerged. On pages five through seven, you can see a variety of content experts who gave their time freely to make this dream a reality for professionals and families. Note that some of the modules have two sections or even parts, examples being 3A and 3B, or the Engaging Conversations module actually has four parts. Turn to pages five through seven of your Family Professional User Guide. It lists the module descriptions. Although we would love for all families to attend all the sessions within the engagement series, we realize that that's not likely to happen. So the question becomes, how should you choose what modules to offer and what will families really want to attend? Your answer should be influenced to some degree by what you think the families that you serve are most interested in. What is the WIIFM for your families? Or what's in it for me, for the families? Research tells us that families are most likely to attend what they perceive as relevant to their current circumstances and or when they perceive they have a need for specific information. I would think as you looked at those modules that there was one or two that immediately jumped out to you as relevant to your current families.
you may ask, what, what am I going to get with each of these modules? Or what does each module contain? On the slide here on pages 8 and 9 also, you see all the different components of the module. It's like a snapshot of the materials that you will receive with the modules. On pages 8 and 9, it gives you very brief descriptions. Each module also contains a section identifying background information and the information resources related to the module content. Trainers are encouraged to become familiar with the background materials for each module. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of any potential trainer being prepared as the content expert for the training which you will be providing. This will require some preparation time on your part. You will need to read the background materials and do your own research. This will help you become more knowledgeable than the PowerPoint notes you may be using. It will also give you information related to the topic as you do the question and answer time if you choose to do one. We have just taken a big picture look at the entire engagement series. Now let's take a more detailed look at the specific materials. To do so, we're going to use some of Module 1 materials to illustrate the type of information that comes with each module and how the materials can be used. We will also include some of the unique features of some of the modules. Here are three different covers. The one on the left is the Family Professional User Guide for the entire series, or this overview today. The one in the middle is the training plan for Module 1. And the one on the right, the third one, is the cover of the participant handout for Module 1. Each module has a training plan and a participant handout with a matching heart picture. The gray box on each document cover identifies the name of the document actually. Since these modules may be updated, we have provided version numbers in the footer so that you can check online from time to time to make sure that you have the latest version. Use the version number to identify the most current document as errors and necessary changes may be identified, documents will be revised and the version number updated. For example, changes have already been made to the formatting of the evaluations and information added to the certificates since the first introduction of the modules. You will always want to check the website for changes to versions periodically before you do your trainings.
Every trainer who develops a training for adult learners should begin with the training plan and determine what the participants need to know in order to set the training goals and determine your outcomes, what participants can take from the training and apply immediately. This training plan will contain a session description which could be used to advertise the training. It also lists methods the trainer might use to provide the basic information which would make sure participants meet the outcomes. All trainers should read the resources provided by the developer to add to the knowledge base of the topic on which they're going to present. The training plan on the slide is for Module 1 and the title is Engagement of Families in the Transition Process, Increasing the Odds Your Child Will Succeed in School. It was developed by Nikki Patton Rowe and Brenda Mullins. You would always want to give credit to the developers and keep the copyright. However, you may choose to insert your name on the PowerPoint as the presenter. These instructions in the training plan are very detailed for your benefit. At the bottom of the page, you'll see some very detailed training instructions about the PowerPoint trainer notes, such as the explanation of symbols used in the notes and so on. We will discuss this in more detail as we look at the PowerPoint for Module 1. Please open the agenda or the training plan for Module 1. See how it is divided into sections for your immediate processing. You have your opening, then the two major points listed in the gray areas. The time allotments are in the left column. The first number is typically for a shorter session like we talked about earlier. The other number or numbers are for longer sessions with extensions inserted. The second column explains briefly the expectations found detailed in the note pages of the PowerPoint. It also alerts you to extension activities for a longer session. The third column provides the PowerPoint page numbers within the segments, and the last column lists any materials you need to provide for participants or perhaps other supplies needed for activities 
that you will do with the participants within the session. This is what a PowerPoint slide looks like when it's opened in the notes view instead of the slide view. The notes section of the PowerPoint contains the detailed training content, what we want participants to learn. The notes are written from the perspective of what you might say, first person language. When preparing to facilitate this training, become familiar enough with the content that you can share the information in the PowerPoint notes using your own words. Trainers should consider the information in the PowerPoint notes as a starting point and feel free to add relevant information and or examples. The key points you want participants to learn is found on the PowerPoint slides themselves. In most cases, the PowerPoint slides contain short statements or phrases and are abbreviated versions of what you have in your notes view and matches to some extent the participant handout. Using keywords or phrases on the slides instead of full sentences reduces the likelihood that you will read the slide verbatim, which most participants find particularly annoying
The PowerPoints of some modules may contain video clips that either are already embedded into the PowerPoint or you may have to download the clips from the Internet. And download instructions are provided in your PowerPoint. Practice using the PowerPoint before the actual training to make sure that the video clips will run on your computer. As I mentioned earlier when discussing the training plan, the PowerPoint notes also contain instructions to you as the trainer. When you see the little arrow symbol in the PowerPoint notes, it means that the information on the slide will appear or just fly in when you click the presentation mouse or the down arrow on your keyboard. See the little page up there, kind of like a note page? That indicates a note or clarifying information for you as the trainer, and that will be in your note pages. The star symbol in your note pages, when you click on it, it will show a slide, or you can click again to hide a slide.
This is the participant handout for Module 1. You can see that the handouts are meant to be very interactive, such as fill in the blanks there, and it also has space to provide note taking for the participants. The gray boxes often contain what we consider FYIs or for your information content. That usually is additional information such as research snippets or maybe just additional resources that the parents might like to read later. You may not use it during your presentation, but you could just allude to it as you go through. If you know the group you are presenting have very limited literacy skills or writing capability, either pair share in completing handouts or give an option not to write on them or even embed the answers into each section within your presentation. You could give a brief synopsis of the NAEYC information in the box above, for example. We recommend that you not do handouts directly from the PowerPoint or give the PowerPoint slides as handouts, no matter how much you're tempted to do that. Remember as a trainer, you must know your audience and make adaptations also accordingly without compromising the validity of the content to meet the outcomes. Here's a sample needs assessment and it's in module one. Some training modules contain a needs assessment unique to that module. The needs assessments are designed to get a sense of what participants already know about the topic, to identify what participants want to know about the topic, and to gather participant background information. When sending the needs assessment to participants, don't forget to include instructions for returning the needs assessment to you. An example such as an address, uh, an envelope already addressed, fax it, email it, however you want to do that. You might also consider using the free online survey, SurveyMonkey. And remember, you're not conducting research. So any information you receive about participants before the training is better than none. These are meant to serve as suggested needs assessment questions, a starting place. Use the questions as few as you choose to or as many as you choose to that meet your specific needs and even reword them if you see that as necessary. You may decide if a needs assessment is appropriate for your expected audience. This is a sample evaluation for Module 1. However, each module has an evaluation to provide some pre and post assessment of learners. You will need to explain how to complete the evaluation, how the information can help you as the trainer, and then also how you would use the information, such as reporting. Tell them you appreciate their willingness to complete it. Again, if you know your audience has low literacy skills, you may need to have participants pair share and hope one of the pair can complete both based on the answers. In this case, you may want to only use the questions specific to the training outcomes and just ignore the others. You could also choose to send this survey using SurveyMonkey after the training if you have participants' email addresses, but make sure that you give them a heads up to look for the evaluation in their email inbox.
Most modules have additional information such as worksheets or supplemental readings and handouts. One such additional material is a generic sign-in sheet and this sign-in sheet contains just typical sign-in information that you'll want to capture. The second one is an ECE TRIS sign-in sheet that is required if you're a credential trainer and you're providing credit for the training. ECE TRIS is the Early Childhood Education Training Records Information System. For more information about ECE TRIS, go to the website here on your slide. Here is a sample certificate for attendance. As supplemental materials, each module has a certificate ready for you to provide to all your participants. If you know who will be attending in advance, you can pre-print the certificates with participants' names inserted and the date. If not, you will need to take enough blank certificates for the number of participants you anticipate to attend. Before printing the blank certificates, don't forget to take out the name and the date where the arrows are and you can write the appropriate information there at the training. Also, don't forget to sign the certificates and add your trainer credential number.
Here is a sample supplemental worksheet. This is an activity sheet from Module 4, the Resiliency Module. This is an example of a supplemental resource, the step-by-step -step guide for families that's found in the Moving On Up module. The Building a Strong Foundation for School Success, the Kentucky Early Childhood Standards Parent Guides are also included in several of the modules as supplemental resources. These guides are included for download. However, you may want to check with your regional training center to see if they have copies available before your scheduled training. If not, you may contact the Kentucky Department of Education, telephone number 502-564-7056, and ask for Tanya to determine availability of the standards parent guides. Let's look at some miscellaneous details. First, we will discuss some alternative ways to use the modules with diverse families. Then we'll talk about some information involving reporting and documenting your use of these materials. We will conclude our session with support options for questions you may have along the way. You have an optional handout with ideas captured from other participants in the Engagement Trainer series. These are additional thoughts which could be used to get the module information used by families who may never come to an actual training. You could consider going to housing projects perhaps and offering one of the modules. You could work with other community um, team members and you could do joint trainings together. You could pull out nuggets of different modules that you feel like parents are particularly interested in and include them in your newsletters or perhaps develop an article for your newspaper. You could also use free online services and do webinars and you could use Skype or Facebook and put information out there from the modules that would help inform our families. You may have many other creative ways to add to this list for families who will not come to our trainings.
The State Personnel Development Grant, or the SPDIG, requires some tracking of the training modules presented, the number of participants, both family members and professionals, and information to see if the knowledge of the participants on the topic improved after receiving the training that you do. Because of these impact requirements, the State Personnel Development Grant partners, which include the Kentucky Department of Education and your regional training centers, have been asked to make a commitment to using these modules in a variety of ways. They have steps to adhere to for accountability purposes. You are asked to join the training partners in this replicating process. You're not required to do these nine steps. However, it would really help in data collection to have a better understanding of how many modules were actually presented, how many people really attended, and the impact of the training on the learning outcomes through the evaluations. So, we wish you would consider committing to following these voluntary steps to support the data collection effort. But if you don't, the SPDIG police will not show up at your door. You also have the Regional Training Center listings in your Family Professional User Guide resource materials on page 5.
The reason we are asking for commitment to replicate modules is that the SPDIG partners are responsible for an evaluation plan to report on the grant dollars which we have received to develop these modules. You do not have to understand this plan, but you can be a part of the implementation of this plan in a variety of ways. That we know. Overviews have already been presented to over 100 people, and you make 101. Many of the people who have been trained have their trainer's credential. You're not required to have your trainer credential to do any of the modules, however. If you're planning to provide child care credit, you must have your credential. Also, many conferences now require a trainer credential. So it would be helpful for you to think about obtaining your credential if you do not have one. Information as to how you can do so is provided in the user guide on page 9 under the certificate section. What we don't know is how far this can go. Can we implement the series in every community in Kentucky? Not without you and many others. Will all families come? No. But we can still use alternative methods to get information into those homes to impact their family too. We just have to be innovative thinkers and we have to care enough to do it. Like the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can. The regional training centers are available to answer any questions you might have along the way in implementing these modules. You have the RTC listings in your resource manual packet on page 5. Please contact them for additional support and keep them informed of your trainings both before and after. Please take a couple of minutes to identify just one thing that you've learned in this session today. And think about one idea that you can pass on in using these modules to someone else and hopefully even encourage them to take this overview as well and to get copies of the modules to implement in their community. We would ask that you thoughtfully complete the evaluation so that the best information is given possible about this overview and ways possibly that we could improve it for you. After you complete the evaluation, you will receive the website address to download the modules. It will be up to you to download all of the materials, to print them if you choose to, and to go forward with your replication. We ask for your commitment to this process, that you'll do a module soon in your very own community for your very own families. We thank you so much for your commitment to the children and families in Kentucky.